called, say, Perrin Wharf. And that's where somebody painted on the back of it so that they knew where it was su supposed to be delivered. Now, this is the only place I know of in the entire Chesapeake Bay where you've got a steamboat wharf here and you've got a steamboat wharf right there. <coughs> that white building you see right up there is called Brew House. That's another plantation house, but it was burnt and it did not survive like this one. So that's a plantation house that was built on the original foundation. Accurate, but they had a range that was greater than the cannon. So when Barney would get into a hassle with the British, they would start by firing their rockets. So Barney had to get in close enough through all of that barrage of the rockets just to be able to fire his cannons back at the British. So you can see the disadvantage that he was at right there. Well, right in this cove, one of their vessels got hit by a concrete rocket. As inaccurate as they are, you fire enough of them once in a while, it's kind of like a squirrel's going to find a peanut or whatever. Right, right. Um, one of them hit one of these barges, and there was a munitions case on board that exploded. And so there was a fire that started, and all of the men on board jumped in the water just to get off of it because they thought the whole thing was going to go up. Joshua Barney's son, William, signaled to his father, asked permission to go on board that vessel and see if he could put out the fire. So imagine if you are the father and your son asks permission for you to put your life in harm's way to save this vessel. Well, what are you going to do? You've got to say yes because all these men are out there. I mean, you can't show differential treatment. So he says yes. So one of the barges takes him over. He hops into this barge that's on fire. And he, he takes a bucket and he starts filling it up with water. And when he gets it high enough, he would run from one side of the boat and jump on the gunnels. This is like this. And he would put his weight on it, run to the other side, put his weight on that to rock the boat. And he rocked it back and forth so that the water in the hull eventually sloshed all over the barge and put out the fire. He, he saved the barge.